What's up everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and in this video we're going to quickly talk about the Hashable Protocol. Now the reason we're even talking about this at all is because there are a lot of components in SwiftUI that require your model or your type to conform to Hashable. And one of those examples is using a model in a for each loop. And when you put a data type in a for each loop, it needs to conform to something that gives it a unique ID. And now normally we use the identifiable protocol, but sometimes you don't want to give an ID to your model. So instead of using an ID, we can use the hashable protocol. And by conforming to hashable, we're basically just giving our model or our object a hash value, which is very similar to a unique identifier so that the system can identify the object. Hashing is actually something that's used across all software development, including websites, uh, it's not just related specifically to SwiftUI applications. So if you want to learn more about hashing, definitely go ahead and just Google what is hashing, what is a hash value, and there will be a ton of results. Uh, but if you are ready, let's jump into the code and make our objects conform to Hashable. All right, I am back in Xcode. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It will be a SwiftUI view, and let's call this Hashable Bootcamp. Go ahead and click create, click resume on the canvas, and then let's get ready for coding. And I'm really only covering this topic because I've seen uh, many people use it in SwiftUI demonstrations and tutorials, uh, but no one really explains what it does. And I've seen a ton of questions where people are getting confused. Why am I using Hashable? What does it mean? What is it doing? So we're just gonna quickly go through that. Let's start out very basic by adding some data to our view. So let's say let data, this will be of type array of string. And we'll set this equal to, and we're just going to keep it simple. We'll say one, uh, two, three, four, five. And let's just put these onto our view. So we will create a scroll view, a scroll view open the brackets. I'll add a V stack. And then in the V stack, we'll add a for each open the parentheses. And we're going to use this third completion here with an ID and content. And you've probably used this completion a couple times before and might have been a little curious about what this ID is. So for this data, of course, will be our data array. I'll just pass that in. The ID we're going to use is backslash dot self. And then for the content, we'll hit enter, get rid of this, and this will be for each item. And we're looping on each of these items. So let's just add a text. And inside the text, we'll add the item. And let's just give it maybe a font of headline. Click resume on the canvas, and we should now see a very simple list of items on our screen. Let's give this V stack some spacing of 40 just to spread them out a little bit. We have the items on our screen and the reason we can use this backslash dot self is because these are strings and a string conforms to a protocol called hashable. And basically what it does is create a kind of a unique ID for each of these strings. So behind the scenes, each of these items are actually getting a hash value. And we can actually see that. So in this text, instead of adding the item here, I'm going to add the item dot hash value dot description. And this will actually give us what the hash value is for each of these items. And we can see this here. And this is not something that we actually need to worry about as developers. We never really record these hash values. But you can see here that each of these strings are being converted to basically a random number that is unique to that string. And because this is hashable, we can use it in this for each statement because each of these items in the data will then have a unique separate ID. All right, so now that we know the basics of hashable, let's go and create our own model. So I'm going to create a struct and let's call this my custom model. And let's just open the brackets for now. And this custom model is going to have a title. So let's say let title. And, we'll, and this will be of type string. 
And then let's take this custom model and make this data array an array of my custom model. So now instead of these strings, we're going to have my custom model and we'll have one. I'm just going to copy this and paste it a couple times. And then this will just change the title to three, four, five. All right. So now if we took this my custom model and just put it into the data here, we're going to get an error. That's because my custom model has no hash value. So if I delete this and still try to run it, we're still going to get an error. And it's literally going to tell us that the struct requires my custom model to conform to hashable. Now, before we actually get into conforming to hashable, I just want to point out, uh, I just want to touch on identifiable. So, so far in this course, if you've been following along, I usually use identifiable rather than hashable. So we can make the my custom model conform to identifiable. And then we can add an ID. So we could say let ID and we could just make it an, a random ID by using the equals UUID open and close parentheses dot string. And when you have an ID, a unique ID for each model, we don't actually need to conform to hashable because we already have an ID. So we don't need a hash value, one of these numbers. We could just use that random ID. So if I comment this out for a second, I could use the other for each completion, uh, this first one here, and I can just pass in the data, click enter on the content, and this will be for item. And then I can just put in the text with the item here and call that font dot headline. Sorry, the text should actually be the item dot title. And if I click resume, our model right now conforms to identifiable. We put it in a for each and it's working. We can see all the titles. And if I change from title to dot ID, we can actually see the unique IDs as well. And this is very similar to the hashable. It is a unique ID for each model, and that's why we can use it in this for each. I definitely recommend using the this ID approach. It seems a little easier and cleaner to me, but sometimes you might not want to create an ID for this model because it might get confusing, or you, maybe you don't want other developers in your app uh, using this ID for anything or accessing it. So for some reason, you don't actually want these models to have an ID. So instead of conforming to identifiable, we could conform to hashable. And to conform to hashable, we basically need to create a hashable ID for the model. So to do that, I will add a hash and there's a built-in function that is the hash, the into and in out. And this hasher will basically just create a unique ID that we're looking for. So we can call hasher dot combine. And here we can pass in some values to create uh, a unique val to create a unique hashable number. So at the beginning of this video, I, the number one had a unique hashable value that we saw on the screen. And basically we're going to do the same thing, but we're just going to use the title. So I'm just going to pass in the title here. And this should create a unique hashable value. So going back down to the code, I'm going to delete this for each that we used for the identifiable, put back in our original for each. And the item is actually the item dot title. And if we click resume, this should build because now we can use this ID backslash dot self because the actual data, each of these models conforms to hashable. And if I, instead of adding the title, if I add the item dot hash value dot description, we could see these are the hash values that are actually being created from this function that we added. So the bottom line here is if you ever have a model that you don't want to add an explicit ID to, because if you can add an ID, it's probably easier to use the identifiable method. 
Uh, but if you don't want to use an ID, you can always use the hashable method and then you can create a hash function. And I would also note that you can customize this even farther. So if you had maybe multiple items here, if you had a subtitle of type string, we could use the title plus the subtitle. And then this would create a hashable value based on both of these combined, which would be even more unique than just the title. Because if you had two, because if you had two models with the same title, they would end up with the same hashable number. But the case of having an item with the same title and subtitle is probably less common. So this could be a better approach. I'm not going to walk through all that because uh, if you're getting to that point in your app, you're probably much more advanced than this video. Uh, but that's pretty much it. I just wanted to walk you guys through what Hashable is because a lot of SwiftUI developers and courses are using it or at least using this ID backslash dot self. And now you know why. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.